Praise God. I'm so glad he won't turn loose. Amen. He said, no man is able to pluck you out of my hand. He said, no man is able to pluck you out of my father's hand. Jesus even said, he said, my father is greater than I. Wow. What a statement to make. Nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. Now, that don't mean you can't walk away. Or you can't jump out of the hand of God. But I don't think we want to do that. Do you? That wouldn't be a wise decision. Praise God. God's awesome. God is great. Hallelujah. Can I obey the Lord? Will you, will you let me? Well, everybody right now, I just want you to, want you to just stop what you're thinking. Why don't you close your eyes? Just get your mind on Jesus. Just say the name of Jesus. Just say his name two, three, four times, however you need to say it. Get your mind focused on Jesus. Because he's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. And he loves you. He loves you more than words can express. And he proved that when he died on Calvary. He wants you to know how much he loves you. And his joy is unspeakable and full of glory. And his peace is from everlasting to everlasting. And he reaches out to you right now. I love you. I love you. I love you. Reach out with your hand. Will you just like you're going to take, take a hold of somebody's hand. Just reach out and get a hold of him. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. There's none like you. There never shall be one like you. There never has been one like you. And I love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength, all that is within me. I love you, Jesus. And I know that you love me.
He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Period. Now, you can go along with it if you want to, but I'm going to use that one verse of scripture. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I'm going to look in the spiritual mirror and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to preach it myself tonight. If I, I even thought about it. If I had a big enough picture, I'd put it on the stand and put it right there. And so I know you're going to preach to yourself. You're going to preach to yourself. How many have ever done that? Preach to yourself. Looking in the mirror, driving down the road. Get on yourself with the gospel. I mean, just tear yourself up with the gospel. And say, so you need to get in line. And I've told myself that many a time. My daddy always said, if you go to church with me, you just prayed up when you got there. <laughs> 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 That's an awesome thing. You know, I didn't have to worry about that. My mama was a good driver. You know, I started riding to church with my daddy. Now, that became a different story. Kind of fell into your category. Driver, he was the passenger Oh! <laughs> Let's pray and ask blessings today. God, Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to gather in your name, to gather in your house, to be able to, to praise and to worship and to pray and to celebrate as a body of believers without fear of persecution, without fear of somebody coming in saying, oh, it's against the law. You can't do that. I thank you, Lord, for this privilege that we have. Oh, yes, praise God. Praise God for the privilege that we have and the privilege that we have that we can call on a risen Savior and ask to be forgiven of our sins. And he says, I forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We speak your blessings upon your word today. Amen. Bless your servant as he tries to serve. Amen. And will not fail to give you the glory and the honor Amen. that is due your name. In Jesus' lovely name, Amen. for his sake, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
This is considered a public setting. Preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. Another uh, word used to, another term, term used to uh, preach is to urge acceptance of and or the abandonment of an idea or a course of action. I can stand up here and Brother Richard probably shoot me before I get halfway through it, but I can stand up here and preach you something so close to the gospel of Jesus Christ that you would amen me, you'd wave your hand before the Lord, you'd say, preach it, brother, but it would be so far away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ that Brother Richard would probably authorize one of you to shoot me and nobody's got to go. And so we just need to get rid of him. He's a charlatan. He's a troublemaker. He's trying to turn your mind away from the truth of the gospel. Now, believe it or not, that happens a lot. More than you realize. People will read their Bible and they'll know the truth of the gospel by reading the word and knowing the word, but then they'll listen to so-called preachers who pervert the word just subtly enough that you think they're telling you the truth. Don't sit there and look at me why. You don't know what you're talking about. Trust me. I've listened to them. And if you pay attention to them, they pervert it just enough to cause you to change the way you think about Jesus Christ. That's the truth. And then they want you to send them a thousand dollars so they'll pray for your miracle. Can we do that, Brother Richard? Can you do that here? Okay. I was going to say, we can use that Kleenex box and you bring me a check for a thousand dollars and we'll pray for your miracle. We've heard that before. But to realize that there are people out there that they're going to urge you to accept their idealism and they're going to cause you to want to change or abandon the ideas that you have today. That's part of preaching. To proclaim a message. And to do it in a tiresome manner. I watched Brother Jason preach this morning and I'm thinking, he's going to get tired in a minute and he's going to have to quit. But you know, I know how he is. I don't know what he No. But I know what it's like. When you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't get tired. Amen? Amen? But it's to advocate earnestly. It's to put or to place an idea or something in motion that will create a cause and effect in the situation that you're in right now. And that's what Jesus is wanting us to do. He said, go into all the world. All the world. Well, do I need to buy a plane ticket to China? I'm in the China. People are hungry for the gospel in China. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Germany. I've been to Ukraine. People are hungry to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. But have you ever thought about right here in America? We're starving to death for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We may look this morning. We had a nice crowd this morning. Uh, uh, you know, probably close to 100 or maybe a little over this morning. But there are people out here on our streets, in our grocery stores, in our department stores, on our jobs, that are hungry for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's our responsibility to share it with them. Now, remember, I'm, I'm preaching to me. David, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to share Jesus with me. And, and to make sure. I told a kind of lovely story that uh, I stand in my driveway the other day and uh, an old friend of mine that I worked with for many years, he pulled the driveway and got out. And about the time he stepped out of his truck, another truck come pulling in there. And this old long-haired, beardy feller, bib over hall, sweat ripping off of him. He come a walking up and I kept thinking he was a point of making hand gestures. And I'm thinking, you take about two more steps closer to me and I'm going to put you back out there in that truck. 
you know. I'm this kind of fellow, I love everybody. But, you know, when you invade my personal space, and I don't know who you are, I'm going to keep you at arm's length. And he walked up and he rubbed his throat and he whispered, he said, I've been treated for throat cancer. He said, I can't talk very well. And he began to talk and share. And we found out that he and I had been friends for over 50 years. And we probably haven't seen each other in 50 years. And we talked there for two or three minutes. And I said, now, we used to go to this church. When I come to my grandparents, he said, yeah. He said, I went to that church till up just a few years ago. I said, you ain't done back straight on the Lord, have you? Quit going to church. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to this other church. He said, because I confronted the, past, the new pastor we got, all he wanted to do is preach about politics. And he said, I told him square to his teeth. He said, I'm not here to learn about politics. He said, I'm here to hear about Jesus. I said, praise God, brother. Praise God. Going to me. They didn't talk about Jesus. They didn't know that man. They hadn't seen him in 50 years. About the second question I asked him, where are you going to church at? And he told me, still going to the house of God. Still got a responsibility. Going to all the work. Hey, might just be across the street. Might be down at the gas station when you get gas. Might be at the grocery store. Trying to pick out which kind of bologna you like the best. You can start a conversation with almost anybody over almost anything. Do you realize that? And you can have a lot of fun doing it. I asked a guy one day, and I said, I want you to look at that. I said, they got 20 different kind of popsicles in the, in the case. And he just stopped for a minute. He didn't know what to say. I said, don't you look. They got 20 different kind of popsicles. I said, the problem is, I said, all the red ones taste the same. All the blue ones taste the same. All the green ones taste the same. And he just looked at me and I said, they're all the sugar water with flavoring. I said, some of this costs more than others. And he looked at me and he said, are you a critic? I said, no, I'm mad because I can't eat them. I said, I'm not bad. I said, I have to get this sugar-free ice cream over here. It's more expensive. It's not fair. It's just not fair. They take the sugar out. It costs more. It's simply amazing. But you can start a conversation with anybody, almost any word, almost any subject. And if you pay attention, have you got the conversation, you can always get Jesus in the conversation. And I'm not saying, you know, being a bully about the conversation, but you can guide the conversation. You can always get Jesus in the conversation. We had two young men working at our house this week, working on some things that had to be fixed. And I shared a little story with them. And the younger of the two, he just looked at me and I said, if it had not been for Jesus, I said, where would I be today? He didn't know what to say. I don't know if I scared him or he, don't, he just don't want to talk about Jesus. But I got Jesus in there. He heard a conversation about Jesus. He heard testimony about the power of God. So you can start a conversation anywhere, anytime. Go into all the Word. Where is the Word? Anywhere you go. Does that sound reasonable? Right. Chance was the first one to agree with me. Yeah. Took them hands up there. First one to agree with me. The world is anywhere you go. You know what would be fun? Come in here next Sunday morning. Catch Sister Wanda back here. Uh, testify to Sister Rose about the goodness of being saved. You know, well, I'd be silly. No, I wouldn't. You know, if Rose is already saved, one is just practicing. Amen. 
Old Brother Brown Collins, most of you remember him. We had an evangelism class one time, and the guy that was teaching the evangelism class, he said, Brother Collins, he said, do you consider yourself a good witness? Or? He said, well, yeah. He said, all right. He said, I want you to come up here, and he said, I want you to witness to me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he got up there, and he got to talking to him, and he got to tell him about Jesus, and that guy turned to him every which way but loose. And just flat, before he got done, he said, you need to get away from me. I don't want to hear about Jesus. It's all a lie. And Brother Collins did not know what to do. And that guy told him, he said, that's what we're fixing to change. How to be more effective witnesses. And he said, how to confront all these questions that get thrown at us. We're preaching the gospel we have something to say that's worthy to be spoken. We have something that's needful to be heard. It's urgent that, that we get people to accept Jesus Christ. And the reason being, we're trying to effect a change in the world that we live in. And the world that we will live in. Amen? Amen. To share the message, Jesus is the only begotten Son of the Father. He died on the cross to save us from sin. He rose from the dead on the third day to justify us before the Father. And we're guaranteed salvation through Him. Who is Jesus? Can you ask yourself that question? Can you look at the man and say, can you tell me who Jesus is? We come up with all kinds of things to say. But more than anything, I think sometimes we can just live our life and be a tremendous testimony. Do you ever think about that? Just live your life every day and you can be a tremendous testimony. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gathered the disciples with him on the mountain. And he, he began to teach them. What we know is the Beatitudes. I want to look at that real quick. I'm not going to hold you just a few minutes. But he began to speak to them. And he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We've all been down the road. We've all traveled the journey where we've dealt with a broken spirit. A heartbreak. People are trying to destroy us. So much burden and so much load that we get on us that we just don't know if we can take another step. But Jesus is saying, when you're happy, even through these situations, if you start to think, happy, that's what the word blessed means, is to be happy. How can you be happy when you work? Jesus ever give up on you? He wanted to say it, you know, when you're trying to hold on with all your mind, then you realize you're in the palm of his hand. He's never let you go. But everything else seems like it's falling apart. Jesus has never given up. Jesus has never let you go. He's got a hold of you. And he's holding on. And when we realize that, even though our broken hearts, even though the heaviness in our spirit, we can still say that I'm happy because I know that Jesus has saved my soul. Praise God. In verse 4 of chapter 5, he said, Blessed, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be careful. To be humble. Some people are more humble than others. A penitent spirit, a penitent heart. But you know, no matter what we go through, we can have joy. We can have joy. I've been through a lot of situations. A lot of you have been through things probably a whole lot worse than I ever dreamed of. 
but you still have joy. Jesus said you still have happiness. Blessed. You can be blessed. Still have happiness. That's the kind of life we can live. If you read on through the, through the different blessings of blessed, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Scripture says you've got to have faith to please God, but you've got to have a pure heart to see God. Hmm. Makes me stop and think, David, are you? You doing what you're supposed to be doing? Or where are you supposed to be with the Lord? Blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for not my name's sake. I'm going to tell you a quick story. And I'll close with this. You're always sitting there thinking, boy, that'd be good if he gets done quick. But let me share this quick story. The young man that it happened to shared this story with me. He said, I went into this store one day, a little country store, and he said, I got me a pack of crackers and a drink. And he said, I stand on my leg up against the wall and uh, eat my crackers. And he said, this guy came in and he said, you know, he never met me before, but he said, I kind of knew who he was. And uh, he said he started talking to two or three other fellas in there and said he got to talking about my daddy like he was the sorriest, wretchedest, mangy hound dog in Washington County. He said, I mean, he called my daddy everything but a human being. And he said, the more he talked, the matter about God. He said, I just tried to hold my peace and, and, and be the kind of man God would want me to be. And he said, I started to say something about it. And he said, I figured, no, not the public market. I don't seem to need to say nothing about it. He said, so I got my car. And he said, I began to drive home. And he said, the closer I got to home, he said, the more I thought about what that fellow said about my daddy in public, running my daddy down. And he said, I drove to the house and got out of my car. And he said, walk back to the tool shed. And he said, I picked up a bush axe. Let me know what a bush axe is. And he said, I grabbed me a file. And he said, I started shuddering that thing. And he said, I had my heart. And he said, I was going to go back to that store or back to that fellow's house if I could find him. And he said, I was going to kill him. He said, that was my intention. He said, I was going to kill that fellow for talking about my daddy that way in public. And he said, about the time I got that thing good and sharp, said, I walked outside and just swung it through some high grass. And he said, it cut that grass off just like it wasn't nothing. He said, my first thought was, boy, we had a clean cut. His head go fly. He said, about the time I got in the car, he said, I threw that bush axe in the back seat. He said, I opened my car door and was going to get in the front seat. And he said, about that time, he said, my daddy pulled up the driveway. Hey, boy, what are you doing? I just going to take a ride. He said, boy, let me tell you something. He said, you better take that bush axe and put it back in the shed. He said, because what you're fixing to do ain't going to accomplish nothing. He said, my first thought was, how did he know he and I had that bush axe in the back seat? And he said, how did he know that what I was fixing to do wasn't going to accomplish no good? And I looked at him, I said, but daddy, you don't understand. That man had talked to you like the sorriest mangy dog that ever was created. And he looked at him, he said, he said, he said daddy looked at me and smiled. He said, you know something, son? He said, every time that rascal mentions my name and a cuss word with it. He said, God's a blessing me. He said, God's a blessing me. He said, all the reviling, all the persecution, all the angry words spoken against me.
In the name of Jesus, he said, God's a blessing me every time one is spoken. He said, son, take that bush axe and put it back in the shed. He said, let's be you go right around and praise the Lord a while. And it didn't dawn on me until months after I heard that story. That we as the children of God, whether we've heard it or not, there's been a lot of people speak out against us. You as individuals. Me as an individual. I've heard it. I've been told the things that people didn't like about me. I've been called a devil to my face. Been called a demon many times. Was called a, ser ser a servant of Satan one night. After a church service. Somebody said, well, preacher, I believe I'll knock that fella come off the porch of the church. I said, nah, I'm just going to praise the Lord a while. I said, it makes him so mad. I said, he'll leave. And he did. They were seen and heard tell of him since. And that's been 25 years ago, maybe longer. Don't know where he's at. But no matter what we do, church, God wants us preaching the gospel. He wants us telling, wants us, wants me. He wants me telling people about Jesus and the awesomeness of his power and his greatness and his love. I'm preaching to me. And I look in the mirror and I say, hey, David, are you doing enough? Are you doing all you can do and I have to be honest, and I'll say no. I'm not doing all I can do. If I've stepped on your toes, I'm sorry. But I was preaching to me. Your feet should have been safe. But I don't apologize for the word of God. Let's bow our heads, can't we? Father God, I love you and I thank you. For the privilege and opportunity to be able to share your word with your people. Praise. Praise. Father, I thank you for the privilege to be able to tell people about your son Jesus. And what he's done and what he's doing. What he's done for me. And what he's doing in my life. And I know, Father, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that God can give us the strength and the wisdom that we know how and we know when to open our mouths. And we know how and we know when when we need to be quiet. And we let our life be the testimony. Just the life that we live every day. As some would say, I may be the only Bible some people ever read. Let them read about Jesus and his saving grace. Father, I ask blessings upon your people tonight. A stirring hunger to share your love and to share your joy. And we'll not fail to give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen.